for but reals. But hey, that's just a theory. A, a game, game theory. theory. Thanks for Let's watching. Hey, you're... What up, Sauce Gang, and welcome back to the channel. Hot Sauce Beats here with some more Minecraft lore from Game Theory, and today we are checking out Minecraft's false hero, Minecraft Legends. I have missed reacting to MatPat's Minecraft lore so much. It's so entertaining because you never know where it's gonna go, and we learn so much from it. So I'm beyond hyped, but before we jump into it, make sure you show Matt Pat some love by subscribing to his channel. And if you enjoyed my reaction, please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and it greatly helps out the channel. But enough talking, let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot Sauce Beats is finally here. Hot Sauce Beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot Sauce Beats. Woo! Stand aside, Green. If you thought Clay dropping the mask was the biggest thing happening in Minecraft news this week, think again. Because today we've got an expose oh. on Steve. <laughs> I'm like, uh, what was bigger? That was pretty huge. I mean, a couple days later, they did the Dream Team meetup. That was kind of cool. Yeah, that Steve. Turns out Steve's the latest up, in a Steve? long line of My heartless oppressors, conquering lands, sucking out their resources, and then leaving them to die. What? How do we know this? Steve was well, evil? you heard about the newest game, Minecraft Legends? The whole thing is pure propaganda. Whole bunch of lies. So, let me ask again, who's really well, I don't know anything about Legends. off now? Huh, Mojang? Hello, I don't know Internet. anything at all about Minecraft Legends. Game None of it. Theory, the show where we're still trying to bribe. It's a game theory. God, dude, it, again, this is another thing. It's been three months since I've seen anything Matt Pat related. Oh, I'm ready. Jang into telling us what's canon. And if people are asking, you know, is that fact? Is that did that really happen? You know, we're not saying that that's exactly what happened, but uh, <laughs> maybe it did. Do you think it did? What's it gonna take, Mojang? How many <laughs> emeralds are you talking about what kind here? Of whatever it is, I will is that? make it happen. You see, friends, today we're diving into the newest answer. edition. To the world of mining and crafting, the yet to be released spin off title Minecraft Legends, an action strategy game that, based on the first few trailers, seems to be bursting at the seams with, say it with me now, lore. lore. I, mean, just, <laughs> I mean, just look at this thing. You can see enemy mobs like zombies, skeletons, villagers, and are those baby creepers down there? Those All are of them baby. together baby. to follow a mythical hero leading the charge against an invading force of piglins. And uh, looking at some of those pig people it looks like they've been hit the gym recently what is going on with it i think they should probably get tested for peds steroids uh it's not allowed little piglins this game but whatever it is it seems important you know those mysterious broken nether portals that you find out in the overworld half filled frames of obsidian surrounded by magma nether rack and gold engulfed in flame minecraft proper never truly answers why they're there or how they get there but it seems like the new game is gonna answer all of that within the first really? 40 seconds of the announced trailer we see nether portals bursting up out of the ground piglin armies out? charging through them ready for battle and again Look at it, nether rack with gold detailing. They are the same thing. It's likely these nether portals got dismantled by the United Overworld Army. To stop the piglins from coming? Yeah? So Steve's good then. Broke him up in an effort to prevent more piglin forces from charging on through. So right off the bat, this new game seems to be positioned as a critical linchpin for oh, fleshing out the awesome. war of Minecraft. One of the things that they're putting into the trailer alone. Can you imagine what must be hiding in the game proper? I could spend hours pouring over this thing frame by frame to find all its little secrets. Secrets, except there's one teensy tiny little problem with that. The devs are refusing to tell us whether the game's canon or not. Quote from them. The events you'll take part in are neither fact nor fiction. They're simply part of a tale that's been passed down from villager to villager. Which oh. is exactly the sort of stuff that we see in the opening seconds of the Again, trailer. It's a, it's a, a crappy answer. And us zooming through the pages into the world of the story. Because let's face it, nothing helps the clarity of storytelling in video games like when a series introduces books of questionable canonicity. Anyway, the way I see it... <laughs> Real estate. And with Minecraft Live coming up next week, I figured now would be the perfect time it's to look into this estate. game to start theorizing about its canonicity and how its story may be able to fit into the Matt Pat, did you just make up a word? Canonicity a real word? Words are overrated. You've heard me say that. They're overrated. Wider Minecraft narrative. Because let me tell you, friendos, I don't buy let it. I smell em. something fishy here. Oh, sure. This legend being passed down amongst the villagers, the narrative the game seems to be selling us on is all about a hero who unites the overworld to save it's us Steve. from pig-themed invaders. But I don't think it's true. Or at least, I don't think it's entirely true. I suspect that what we're seeing here is actually a warning. A warning from a dying dimension. And it all 
all boils down to one word, greed. In one of the early trailers for Minecraft what? Legends called Fiery Foes, we're told some of the motivations the piglins have for invading. The one I like most tells of a peaceful land that did not know cruelty. Until it was attacked by invaders spreading the scourge of greed. Huh. Greed. The piglins are attacking because they're greedy? I mean, I guess I can see that. If you throw out gold when encountering a piglin mob, they'll forget they were attacking you and run straight for Literally. it. So clearly, they are motivated by at least some level of greed, but something just seems off about this explanation. I mean, gold is actually pretty plentiful in the nether. It's literally all over the place. Sure, the overworld has gold too, but it's much more sparse than in the nether. It would make nice. much more sense if the piglins were interested in diamonds or iron, resources they can't naturally find down in the nether but nope they don't really seem to care about those yeah, i don't know if i believe that i mean if we're talking about like trolls right in the mountains they have tons of gold but yet they want more and more and more of it that's why i kind of always have viewed piglins like is that they're like minecraft trolls makes sense doesn't it hmm? riddle me that batman hmm? sure you can find diamonds and diamond armor down in the bastion remnants but those feel more like things that they've collected with no real understanding of their use or value considering that they choose to wear gold armor and use gold weapons instead of opting for the much stronger diamond-based items. So the idea that greed was the thing that led the piglins to the overworld just doesn't make a lot of sense given what we know about uh, their society. Okay, I so see where he's going with that, this. Then what could possibly be the reason for their invasion? They want well, more. This isn't the first time that we've seen interdimensional invasion within the Minecraft universe. Maybe looking at that other instance, we can get a better idea of what's happening here in Legends. So come with me as we explore Minecraft's dungeon crawler, the very creatively titled Minecraft Dungeons. The main plot of I Minecraft Dungeons that. focuses is around the Orb of Dominance, a sentient object that's able to manipulate anyone around it. At the end of the main story, the Orb of Dominance is revealed to be the Heart of Ender, a well, creature now it's of ruined. immense power that looks like it crossed an <laughs> Ender Man with a spider. Of course, we defeat oh, it shit. and send it back to its own dimension, but that's not where the story ends. In the game's DLC, Echoing Void, the player is tasked with collecting six Eyes of Ender so that they can travel to the end to finish off the Heart of Ender for good. To do this, the player has to fight against Ender Scent, these lanky, hammer-armed, incredibly powerful Jeez. versions of Endermen. But, um, why have we never seen these things before? Are they just a construct for the game? A mob to They're fill out hidden. the roster? They're in another alternate universe that we don't want to go to because they look very spoopy. Very much so. Ender spiders? I mean, get out of here. No, thank you. Or is there an actual lore reason they're here and not in Minecraft proper? Well, as I kept playing, I started to see that this was only the beginning. As we're all very oh, really? familiar with by now, the end in vanilla Minecraft is a fairly desolate wasteland. You've got abandoned cities, a very limited number of mobs, and a singular type of plant, the chorus fruit. But over in the Minecraft Dungeons Echoing Void DLC, the end actually looks very different. You'll find that there are a number really? of species and subspecies that we've never encountered before in the regular game. In addition to the giant ender sense that I just mentioned, there are also three types of ender Bro, that is spooky fam. The end also appears to have plant life beyond just chorus fruits, with plenty of grass and trees lining the pathways through the game. This is a huge change from the barren yellow wasteland that we're familiar with in vanilla. But why? What could this possibly mean? Is this just because a different Tell us. Let us know, Mad Pack. Because it's a game theory. <laughs> I love saying that. I'm sorry. I love it so much. I love it. For worked on the game or because they were looking like for one of the best things on YouTube. The franchise? No. And we know this for a fact due to one creature, the Endermites. You see, the loss of animal and plant life that happens between Minecraft dungeons and main game Minecraft is known as biodiversity loss. Something has caused the dimension to undergo a massive decrease in the number and variety of flora and fauna living there. Now, in the real world, biodiversity loss is generally a marker that the ecosystem is dying. Dude, Dude Matt, Matt Pat, you're, you're using big words now. Big words. You gotta, you gotta shorten them up a couple letters, fam. Shorten them up a couple letters. The factors like global warming, natural disasters, or the two that I think that apply to the end, invasive species and mm. over-exploitation of resources. Invasive Let me give you an example of how these sorts of dominoes fall. Back in 1926, the last of Yellowstone National Park's wolf packs were killed off by employees, all as a part of an effort to reduce danger to humans that might be camping there. Good job, humans. Way to punish animals for the problems that we ourselves create. However, this set off a chain reaction of unintended consequences. By 
removing an apex predator from the ecosystem, suddenly the elk population exploded inside the park, and they began to overgraze. This then damaged the population of trees, which in turn lowered the number of birds that the area could support. It also made it so beavers were unable to properly build their dams, which what? caused higher levels of soil erosion along the riverbanks. The erosion and overgrazing impacted the plant life near the river that shaded the water, which combined with the lack of beaver dams, raised the water temperature beyond what the local fish could tolerate. The ecosystem was in a death spin. The only thing to stop the downward spiral was a reintroduction- Bring on the wolves! <laughs> You get a wolf! You get a wolf! You get a wolf! Wolves back into the ecosystem. And this is what I suspect happened between Minecraft Dungeons and wow. Minecraft. You see, if you've been watching our Minecraft theories for a while, you'll know that there's evidence to suggest an invasive species did indeed show up in the end. Us. Humans. I Whatever agree. you call the ancestors of Steve, I call them the ancient builders. As we've talked about in past theories, it's likely that the ancient builders, while on the run from some threat, like say the Warden or Wither, built an emergency portal to the end and then wound up getting stuck there. They were, whether intentionally or not, an invasive species to this new land. And since they had no way home, they had to start using local resources to survive. As off. we see in dungeons, wow. it's likely that when they first traveled to the end, it was a thriving natural ecosystem. They began to build cities using the local resources. Purple wood and purple blocks. There are also a number of new glowing blocks throughout Minecraft dungeons. I love this, man. When you first start watching any of Matt Pat's Minecraft theories, right? In the beginning, you're like, I don't know, man. That's a, that's a pretty far stretch. And then as it goes on, he starts giving, he starts presenting these facts and you're like, I'll be dipped in poo. This dude sounds right. Gosh darn it. ...and cities. And given that most of the fauna that we see here is bioluminescent, it's likely that those were the plants used in creating those lanterns. All of this usage by the invasive species overtaxed the available resources, which in turn left the end to start its slow, painful death spiral. It also didn't help that the builders hunted down the race of ender dragons to near extinction in order to make their elytra. Again, this is something that I went much more in depth into in a past theory. So if you're a bit Do confused or you want more detail, or you're just like, hey, prove it, Matt Pat, that video is available for you right there. Anyway, just like the wolf packs in Yellowstone, when you eliminate an apex predator from an ecosystem, there's gonna be some unforeseen consequences, some dominoes that tip over that you didn't see coming. And here, it's more the enders? endermites. You see, oh, in the, the Minecraft endermites. Dungeons okay. Echoing Void DLC, endermites are are everywhere. They are literally crawling around the dimension. But in vanilla Minecraft, yeah, not so much. They only have a 5% chance of spawning when you throw an ender pearl. So what happened here? Well, I suspect that by killing the ender dragon, the ancient builders killed off the mites' only real predator in the dimension. And even worse. Do ender dragons love eating ender mites? Is that a thing? I, I didn't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. It doesn't make no sense probably gave them a massive feast. Hundreds of dead ender dragon carcasses that are all ready to be munched on, allowing the ender mites nom, to nom, reproduce nom, and <laughs> multiply at a rapid <laughs> rate. And when the I just picture Pac-Man, nom 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 Ender dragon carcasses were all gone, well, mites are known to also eat plants, thereby leading the remaining fauna to be devoured by the bugs. Oh. But once that was gone, there was just nothing left but a wasteland. The big ender mites Matt slowly Pat. began to that die out, new name. just like everything else in the dimension. The only ones that that were able to survive were those trapped in ender pearls, like the ancient insects that researchers are able to find trapped inside of amber here in the real world. The pearl is thrown and shattered in the game, setting free the ancient bug kept preserved inside. Which brings me back to the thing that started the whole theory in the first place, the piglins in Minecraft Legends. Because while Mojang is claiming that greed is the reason for their invasion, so they trying to come out because of it. The end, we can start to piece together a different picture. Sure, greed might be the impetus for this invasion, but not piglins. In greed. In the trailer, we see piglins charging through the portal. They're except trying to escape. all piglins that we recognize. One of them is a massive, very intimidating looking piglin that seems to be what happens if you give a piglin brute some steroids. This shows us that, <laughs> just like what happened with the end, the piglins and the nether also used to have itself a greater variety of subspecies. It also appears like the piglins may have been able to bring through a greater variety of hog-like mobs to assist them, which would explain the hoglin stables that can be found in some bastion remnants. But by the time we reach regular mine, Minecraft, piglin society has been reduced to a crumbling ruin. They're a species that hoards the last remnants of their most precious resource. And maybe he's gonna connect it, or maybe I missed it, but I'm confused how we were talking about piglins, and then we started talking about the decay of the end, which has nothing to do with piglins. Piglins are nether, so we still got a couple minutes. I'm just confused how they're tied together. This isn't about greed for gold, it's about resource guarding, a behavior that's able to be seen in dogs when they're insecure over losing access to something that they deem yes. important. 
This resource and security showcased by the piglins and the obvious drop in biodiversity that we see throughout the ecosystem points more towards the same issues that the end faced in dungeons, resource depletion and ecosystem death. The piglins may look like they're on the attack throughout these Minecraft Legends trailers, but in reality, they're the ones on the ropes. And the reason for that, the ancient builders. I suspect that they were the aggressors here, invading the nether, taking what was down there. And the only recourse that the piglins had was to go to the overworld to fight back or go extinct. So if this is potentially true, then why doesn't the game just come right out and say it? So, okay, he was just essentially comparing the nether to the end saying we were destroying the nether just like the end, right? I think that he was just using it as an analogy. Well, like the famous saying goes, history is written by the victors. I suspect the Minecraft legends might be written that way as by well. Steve? We've just by talked Steve? about the fact that the nether appears to also be facing biodiversity loss, fewer piglin and hoglin subspecies, a nether ecosystem that feels like it's being picked clean. It's the exact same thing that faced the end throughout dungeons. It was caused by ancient builders coming in and over farming resources. Resources. So, is it that much of a stretch to believe okay. that the same thing is so happening he was just right using now an in the nether? And immediately okay. you can start to connect the pattern here. The ancient builders arrive in a new dimension, they start farming its natural resources, they do irreparable harm to the ecosystem, and then the ecosystem tries to fight back. First we saw it with the Heart of Ender in Dungeons, and now we're seeing it with the Piglin invasion in Legends. So far, there hasn't been any indication that Legends will have us fighting in the nether, but I suspect that, at some point down the line in the DLC or something, we'll not only push the Piglin army back, but we'll chase them all the way to their homes in the nether and then finish the war off down super there. Big in turn, we'll leave their bastions in ruins, the crumbling remains of a once great society laid waste by the armies of the overworld. And if that's the case, if we are indeed the reason that the world was decimated, of course we're not going to pass on the true reason to the villagers. The ancient builders would brand themselves as the heroes of this war, the underdogs, the ones that had to unite the overworld in order to fight the inhumane invaders from below the surface. And the villagers, safe in their healthy overworld with its okay, abundant resources, I see you, Matt Pat. See wiser. you? They'd just be blissfully ignorant of the truth, believing whatever they were told about the true reason these invaders were coming. It was greed. Sure, the pig-faced creatures uh, wanted our gold. And yeah, it might have been greed, but it wasn't the piglins who were greedy. So, is Minecraft Legends canon? It was canon? Steve. Yes. It was us. No. The legend is canon. I have no doubt this story persists among the villager communities, but the story itself of an invading pig army? No, it's fiction. Or at best, it's a half-truth. It hides the reality that resource-hungry overworlds came, saw, and and conquered with zero regard for the species that lived there. Who would have ever suspected that this game all about building would have its roots tied to so much destruction? For but reals. hey, that's just a theory. A, a game, game theory. theory. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're okay, I see you, Matt Pat. It took a second for me to connect why he was talking about the end when we were talking about the nether but he was using it as an analogy of how the end was once this fruitful dimension that we picked it of all of its goodies and we were doing the same thing to the nether and we were doing the same thing to the nether and they were coming back to stop us and run from it and okay it makes sense i really like again you guys know i love these minecraft lore theories there's so much behind the scenes in minecraft that we don't know why it happens and it's up to matt pet to develop these theories for us so we understand what's going on and i believe he hit the nail on the head with this one fam so let me know in the comments what you guys think if he really if you were jiving with this or not but I think he presented the facts well enough to follow and that they were pretty accurate. Again, this is just a theory, but I think it's a good one. So let me know in the comments if you agree with this theory or not, or which parts of the theory you liked or didn't like. And if you enjoyed my reaction, please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and it greatly helps out the channel. Enjoy the rest of your week. And remember, it's eat, sleep, and make beats. And as usual, be kind of one another. And that's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Uh. Got nothing but love for the sauce gang. Peace. Hot sauce beats. Woo hoo!